Welcome to the Miami Boss Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Miami Boss Podcast, your go-to space for insights on business, tech, and the future of innovation. I'm your host, Dominique Lewis, and today we're going to be diving into the game, changing development in the world of AI. And everyone's talking about deep seek AI a next level artificial intelligence model that's making and shaking things up in the world all over the place. Globally, everyone knows now DeepSeek is here and they're here to stay. They're being competitive. And right now they're starting to bump ChatGPT out of the way. I'm currently here in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, consulting on a business transformation project where really exploring AI-driven ordering systems. So trust me, when I say AI is not just a concept anymore, it's not just for the technology industry, it's for every industry, and it's here, even in Kingston, Jamaica, Yemen. And you know what? It's reshaping industries faster than I could even imagine after 15 years in the industry, working from IBM, Accenture, and to consulting to some of the world's biggest and brightest. So let's get a little bit into that. And let's hold on into um, what we are really concerned here about, which is how innovation is being so disruptive right now and getting into every industry. So let's get into this. What is DeepSeek AI? If you haven't heard about DeepSeek AI, it's one of those latest AI models coming out of China and is competing with the likes of OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's Gemini. So what makes it stand out? Advanced multimodal capabilities is just not text anymore, right? So when you say multimodal, let me just explain it for my non-tech Miami Boss podcast listeners. It can handle things like your fingerprints, data importations, It could handle even generated code that's being generated at an insane level. So it could handle your iris, for example, someone scanned your iris. It could handle your fingerprints. It could handle all sorts of different modalities. Next thing, high level of reasoning. This isn't about your basic chatbot. I mean, baby, this could get down into the weeds. It can analyze complex problems. It could generate structured insights, and it could even assist with scientific discoveries which like drug research that normally takes eight to 12 years to get a new drug out, this could happen in a matter of minutes. Scalability and efficiency. Companies are starting to explore how it can analyze, optimize supply chains, automate workflows, enhance business decisions. And even right here in Jamaica, my goodness, you can't believe the type of use cases they're coming about and they're looking for expertise, which we're happily able to provide guidance. What makes it more interesting, China is making big moves in AI. And DeepSeek is a clear sign that the global AI race is only getting more intense, as we saw when we're in Davos, Switzerland last month, that every major company around the globe, every single government around the globe was interested to see how they're going to get into AI space. And they're trying to be the first and the leader, and they're trying to make things there in their country so they could be competitive all around the world and try to knock out the U.S. off the number one spot. So let's talk a little about those real impacts in the global scale. So first, when you look at the business and the workforce transformation, it's redefining jobs. It's automating tasks. It's changing how companies operate. In Jamaica, I'm seeing businesses looking at all areas of the ordering system, customer service, automation, farming, predictive and analytics, things that once required a huge team. The flip side now is job displacement. I mean, I have friends that are in the tech and work in the automotive space, and they're calling me up. I have friends that are federal employees, and they're calling me up. And so there is a huge flip side to this which is the job displacement. It is surreal and it is real. Many companies will need to retrain their workforce um, and hopefully, instead of replacing them outright with cheaper skills that don't don't need to know and understand the depth of some of the technology. 
So the China, so China, the U.S., and Europe are all in this race, and they want to make sure that Deep Seek is part of China's push to lead. China is responding with Deep Seek, which costs a fraction of the cost that it was made for ChatGPT. I want to say that it took them less than five million dollars to develop Deep Seek. We're in、uh, OpenAI now. I believe the investiture has been towards. Um, I want to say well over 500 million dollars, so really beyond 10x. And companies that are integrating with AI effectively will dominate their industry, right? So this is going to be game changing for every company. We are going to start seeing right now in 2025 a one person billion dollar company that we have never seen before. We've seen 50 50 people company and 100 100. People, company that are valuation 100, but never have we seen one person alone could generate so much more production just by the use of artificial intelligence. So companies are looking quickly to integrate AI, and they're looking to dominate their industries. While those that are not doing anything, they certainly do risk being left behind. So for entrepreneurs and business owners, the message is clear: embrace AI. Or risk falling behind.、Um, third thing I wanted to talk to you about was the ethical and、uh, regulatory challenges. As AI evolves, so do the ethical concerns:、um, data privacy, misinformation, and AI biases are all huge topics.、Um, the recent.、Uh, Elected judge in first Haitian American judge in Broward County, I heard him talking on a podcast just this week, stating the legal concerns and how a judge just issued sanctions for a lawyer that did not properly quote, and they heavily relied upon the AI. And so, Judge Whitney talks about all the challenges that are there in the law profession, and though AI seems to be a tool that many people are using, using. And a tool that is certainly good to have as part of your、uh, work uh, briefcase.、Um, you certainly need to proceed with caution, and you also need to trust, but also verify what you're seeing. Verification is very important because what AI is doing is going out and scoring the, the, the entire web. And you know, if you have more people, like in China, there's a lot more people, and so you could get. Generate a lot more data and it's scouring that whole web. Now, if there's some areas that involve deep seek, deep fakes in that <laughs> that that seek、uh, search as you're searching some of this large web, it can have some catastrophic、uh, results. And also, the error、uh, there could be erroneous messages as part of those data sets. So you do want to be extremely careful. <clears throat> Next topic I want to talk about is AI in business. So there's a project right now I'm doing discovery on、um, in Jamaica, and it's really interesting because even though Jamaica is not part of the United States, what happens is that there's a lot of Jamaicans and Caribbean people in the South Florida and Miami area. So here in Jamaica. Consulting on a business transformation project, and one of the key focuses is building an AI-powered ordering system. Why? Number one, speed. Number two, speed, and number three, speed. <laughs> But it's not just speed; it's speed and efficiency. Because AI can predict demand, it can suggest inventory levels, it can look at your historical ordering trends. You can make real-time changes as necessary. You could customize that customer recommendations in real time, and ultimately have a better customer experience. Number two, you're reducing human human error. Automation ensures that you're going to make fewer mistakes. You're going to have a very quick ordering process, and it's going to be very、uh, controlled in the box, and a best better customer experience. AI can provide instant responses. Personalized product suggestions and seamless interactions. This is just one of the examples how AI is just changing the game and having futuristic concepts that's going to be implemented now. So, 
I've been talking for about 10 minutes, and this is the first time I do a strictly, really monologue um, interaction with this audience here. So I wanted to just not keep it too long, provide you with some final thoughts while I'm here in the beautiful Marley home in Kingston, Jamaica. And I want to give everyone out there a call to action. Okay. So first thing is AI is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. I literally had a argument with someone this week as they tried to convince me all these negative things about AI and how it's not good and how it could be seen as the devil. And furthermore, uh, her opinion was that AI is making us somehow dumber. And her, and her argument was, well, dumb. Have you ever, um, or no, what she asked me was, how many people's phone numbers do I remember? Well, my response was, well, none. I'm like, why would I want to waste my mind on storing, using my storage cap capacity for storing someone's number when I could be thinking about much more complicated challenges like how to solve climate change, how to better understand a particular algorithm that's going to increase my user base or my customer satisfaction. So it was very interesting that this person saw AI as a threat and realized that, you know, not all the wonderful things, but focus on the negative thing. So number one, AI is not going nowhere. And that was really clear and evident as this week I participated on the uh, art code, or code art, I'm sorry, code art event in Miami. And it was amazing to see these young women and and men, uh, well, mostly women, focusing on a career of future engineers. And that was just so awesome to see these wonderful students from Miami-Dade County talk about how they're using AI, how they were able to build a robot, and also talking about their challenges as they were getting into AI and building stuff. I thought that was really, really cool. So AI is here to stay. Whether it's gonna be deep seek or open AI, the technology is evolving rapidly, right? Number two, businesses must adapt. Healthcare, oil and gas, utilities, communications, pop culture, sports, sports medicine, education, um, adult education, early childhood education. All those areas have got to change. All those areas have got to adapt, right? If you don't adapt, you get left behind. All right. You have to integrate AI into your workflows, into your business and increase the pace of, out, of output that you're providing. Right. If you're meeting quality indicators, you know, what can you do to make it even better? Right. Um, number three, ethics matters. Regulation is going to be coming, though slow. Um, EU is leading the way in that. Uh, they came out the AI Act. Um, but companies need to be responsible in their artificial intelligence deployment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. How do you guys see AI impacting your industry or business? Hit me up on social media and drop me a comment whenever you're listening to this. And if you're a business leader looking to integrate AI into your operation, let's connect because the future is not going to wait on anyone. So reach out to me. I'm your host of the Miami Boss Podcast, Dominic Lewis. I'm here for you guys. Reach out to me. Send me a message on LinkedIn, Dominic Lewis. Um, Swiss Software, Swiss Software. Uh, you can find Swiss Software on Instagram. And I'm also running the codeforgood.ai platform. So reach out to me. Thanks for tuning in into the Miami Boss Podcast. Stay sharp, stay ahead, and as always, Keep making those bosses move.